houseplants make your home look beautiful, but having to water them all the time can be a big job. Forget to water them and they can end up looking like this. Give them too much water and you can end up with a big mess. Well now, there's Aqua Globes, the hand-blown glass ornament that waters your plants for you. All you do is fill the Aqua Globe with water, then press it into the soil. That's it. Your plant stays perfectly watered for up to two weeks and you don't have to lift a finger. <laughs> well, I'm done with finals now, so time to talk about science. Now, ECM has been one of the most interesting things to me ever since I've learned about the FGC9. And to not talk too much about myself, chemistry is already a field I have a lot of experience at, but not really too much with electrochemistry. So I'll try to keep it brief for you guys, because I don't really think many of you guys really care too much. And because YouTube has a very strong anti-gardening stance, feel free to stop by my Odyssey for a more complete video. Many of the things that you're going to need will be linked in the guide, and for the things that aren't linked in the guide, I'll be using some of my wonderful Amazon affiliate links to help myself out. <laughs> now that that's out of the way, let's begin our first lesson. When we look at the ECMing process, there are basically four steps that we really need to look at. Boring, rifling, throating, and chambering with these last two basically acting the same. To start off, you're going to need your explosion-proof barrel of choice, preferably 40CR. Cut it 4.5 inches, and optionally you can clean the inside of it with a drill, though keep in mind that this is optional. Cutting the boring rod is quite simple, and just cut it to the approximate length that is described in the guide. The chambering and throating rod, on the other hand, are a little bit more complicated, since you're going to need to add some sort of a taper. While technically not necessary, even the slightest taper will aid in the extraction of waste product from the soil. Once you're done with that, now things become a lot more easier. Let's take a quick look at the prints. If you got weird layer skips, try using a soldering iron to fill up the air gaps since that will help with leaking. One thing I learned is adding PTFE tape on my fixture threads definitely made my fixture much more secure and avoid leaks. You're going to need two tubings, one connecting to your fixture and the other connecting to your reservoir, all with your pump in between. Zip ties can work well as a clamp, and twist tying copper wire works better. Make a sludge filter, connect it to some form of power, I use this old ATX power supply with a breakout board, add salt, do a quick little test run and see if there's any leaks. If all works well then... When it comes to actually cutting the barrel, this is probably the easiest part of the entire process, although it might be the most time-consuming part as well. In fact, Ivan, the creator of this actual process, has a video himself of how you can set up each of these processes. Ivan does a fantastic job of showing how to set up the machining tools because, well, after all, he designed them. So the video should be linked in the card above on YouTube. So I'm going to try to cover the things that Ivan didn't really say specifically, and also some things that I did a little bit differently. Because I can go point by point for each step of the guide, and this video will be somewhere around an hour or two hours long. And Ivan kind of summed it best. And the documentation walks you through the specifics, but that just comes down to reading and following instructions. So you're going to need to take out the barrel each time for cleaning after every single cut for each four of the processes. I'd strongly recommend creating some sort of a waste collection container specifically for the brake cleaner's runoff because it is very dirty and you don't want to spill it on your floor. I also found adding a brass brush to the cleaning process significantly decreased my cleaning times and also increased the finish of the barrel. I found that I could still use paper towel or cloth to get the same finish as I would get with a brass brush. I just found using the brass brush just was quicker, and I'd strongly recommend it because of that. I recommend also keeping track of your specific cutting times, because while the ones given on the guide are very convenient and really helpful for you getting started, you will find out that everyone's experience will be different, and my cutting times ended up changing slightly between the original ones. 
I was able to use my previous cutting times to significantly optimize my ECM process to where I was able to cut three barrels within a week, each done within a day and within a few hours, all done between breaks during finals. The rifling mandrel is pretty easy to do, although just take everything slow. For the top part of the mandrel, all you really need to do is make sure all the wires are nice and tight together, and then you can cut off the rest. I also found myself using JB Quick Weld instead of JB Original Weld, mostly because I didn't want to wait 18 hours when it was already closer to midnight, and the 5 minute cure time is pretty good, and the strength is just good enough for what we're going to be using it for. A nice little thing to know about the rifling portion of cutting is once you get past cut 2 or 3-ish, it becomes significantly easier to have it index, since the cuts are already deep enough where the mandrel kind of just slides into place perfectly. For chambering and throating, they're going to be basically the same, except the tools will be slightly different. My only advice here is, depending on what your alligator clip size was for the boring process, you might need to make it fit for the new tooling. And once you're done with those last two steps, you're basically done now. As is the YouTube portion of this video with all the useful parts. No! No, 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 no! I'll be going over how you can guarantee you have progressive rifling to reach maximum laminar flow for your plants before you can potentially harm them. And I'll also be able to provide you guys with the fun links you guys keep asking for in the comments. And now for the part that you've probably been waiting for the most. The cleanup. Get on to rock! Get up to burn! Stand me the pride and burn for your desire! <sighs> Currently we have three barrels, a good barrel, which was actually my first one, a worst case scenario second barrel, which I kind of intentionally just left things a little, and a godforsaken third barrel, which should probably cause an explosion. Next major video will probably be the Mark II video, in which that case, you definitely want to be subscribed to the Odyssey page, because while this Odyssey exclusive might just be a few extra clips, Really, the next one will be much more um, in-depth with a Mark II. I really want to thank the austere scholar Ivan Alano Handy, PhD, for all the help he did with this wonderful guide. It really is a well-written guide, and I really can't add much else to it right now. If you guys have any questions about the EMCing process, feel free to ask in the comments below or DM me on Twitter. Also, more importantly, use his affiliate links. I need to eat food. But if you don't want to give Amazon any money, feel free to donate to some of my crypto addresses that I just added. Thank you to all of you who decided to stay with me during finals. I look forward to producing much more content much more frequently for you guys. I'll see you guys next time in the zone.